I hear the sound of a 
mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call and at the midnight rise we'll be going home I look around me I see prophecies fulfilled everywhere the signs of the times they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father as he says son get my children and at the midnight cry the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children the shall rise to meet him in the air and then those remain And at the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, I see prophecies fulfilling. The signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, Son, go get my children and at the midnight cry the bright skies as Jesus on a cloud to call his children the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air and then those that remain shall be quickly changed oh yes they shall at the midnight cry, oh, oh, at the midnight cry, yes, I cry when Jesus steps up. 
cloud to call its children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain shall be quickly changed. Oh, yes, they shall. And at the midnight cry, at the midnight cry, at the midnight cry, we'll be going home. the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are in you. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God. Randall Dudley was washed and anointed with Let us therefore pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, and raise him to perfection. O oh God of grace, we remember our brother Randall Dudley. Thank you for giving his family and friends as a companion on our earth. In your body, console us who mourn. It's safe to see in death the gate of eternal life. That in quiet confidence, we may continue until by your call we are reunited who have gone before through Jesus Amen. welcome each 
buried and burial. And we are joining us on live stream for your presence. You are not physically here. May God continue to hold this family, especially those who mourn. And may you be comforted. The hymn, What a Day That Will Be. will be delivered by Randy Ford, the other is Nancy Ford Wilson, and after the eulogy will be a Good evening, everyone. Randall Dalton Ford was born to Evelyn Broom and Ivan Ford at number five Southampton Road, Cathal St. Michael, on the 24th of October, 1957. He was the fourth of five children. Randall had his primary school education at the Montgomery Boys School. Afterwards, he attended the Ellerslie comprehensive schools, of which he often spoke of the fond memories he had of that institution. In September of 1978, Randall started his career in teaching at the Wilkie Cumberbatch Primary School, where he remained for many years. 
It was here that Mr. Ford, as he was affectionately known, shaped the lives of many persons who passed through the Wilkie Cumberbatch School. Whether as a student, a parent, guardian, or even if they just passed the school on their way, on their way home, just walk through the surrounding districts of the school and ask them about Mr. Ford, and they will be able to give you stories for days. Randall will sit and often tell his family of his times at the school and the persons he taught. His favorite, his favorite phrases were, I taught him and her, or I cut he or she tail at school. <laughs> While at the school, he made many meaningful connections with persons who remain close to the family, even to this day. Mr. William Stewart, these are the teachers. Mr. the late David Clark, Mistress Edwin Foster Bino, Mr. Pedro Shepherd, Mr. Pluto Griffith, Miss Cicely Niles, the late Miss Corabino, and Mr. Lemuel Jordan, the USA. The families such as the Coppins, the Bishams, the Patricks, the Gemmels, and many more. One of the more meaningful connections, which was with the Holder family. As Randall took a liking to Miss Heather Holder, while she escorted her nephew to the school. The two of them enjoyed 37 years of togetherness, of which they were married 29 of them. Randall and Heather gave birth to the one and only son, Randy, in August 1984. From then, Randall did everything in his power to ensure that his family was protected and taken care of. Randall increased his teaching skill by acquiring a master's degree in curriculum studies from the Mount St. Vincent University in 2005. After this accomplishment, he became a specialist in special education, which allowed him the opportunity to help students who needed more attention in the education process. He was passionate about teaching and he went above and beyond to ensure that no child was left behind. Randall treated every child he taught as his own. He would receive calls from former students who expressed the gratitude for his efforts in their progress. With his skills, he was able to teach at the St. Elizabeth Primary School, Milton Lynch Primary, and finally, St. Mary's Primary School. Around four years ago, Randall Ford left the teaching profession due to complications arising from the fight with diabetes. Even after his departure from the service, he still made himself available for students to give advice, testimonials, or just to play a lending ear. During the time at home, he spent his days watching any use he can find on American politics and quarreling about the actions of the current president. <laughs> Even although he was going through his sickness, his devotion and love for his family never ceased. Everything he had was dedicated to his family, and he prepared to cover them after his passing. Randall Ford was not just a loving brother, a father, and a devoted husband. He was also a caring and dedicated teacher. He will not only be missed by his family and friends, but by the many students whose lives he impacted. We love you, Randall. Until we meet again, rest in peace. Before we get the other tribute, I wrote a letter to share it with you guys. There are so many things I want to say to you right now. First, I thank you for the answer that you have given me through these persons. A lot of things, but you have never stopped. I held back your I remember you and 
and I had an argument over a problem with my car, I just ended the argument with sauce. <laughs> Secondly, I thank you for the knowledge you, sh you have shared with me. The many nights are helping me with primary or secondary school homework, entering me into SEO competitions, allowing me to push past my limits, and even giving me the chance to assist you in your pursuit of your master's degree. It was these moments that prepared me for the career path that I traveled. I remember I filled out the application for teaching four times, and every time you stopped me. It is ironic that I still ended up along a similar path, but in a different capacity, becoming the training officer at my company. People always ask me if I came from a teaching family, as training seemed to come naturally. Finally, I thank you for showing me what it means to be an outstanding individual by being a loving husband and a wonderful father and a phenomenal man. Any person I encountered who knew you, who knew you were my father, would often spend time telling me about any number of encounters that they had with you. I could we were walking home from the for you in the way they greeted you. But what shocked me the most was the fact that they told, they all told me to ensure I listened to what my father said and I should stay in school. You have shaped the lives of many students, parents, guardians, and even fellow teachers, and I'm proud to be called your son. This is not good, buddy. I know you are with me. I know that you will always be near me. You will guide my steps and give me a fatherly nudge when I lose my way. Thank you for everything. I love you, Dad. Signed, your legacy, Mr. Ronda, Mr. Ford's son. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon to the church. I'm going to do a song for you. It's called Stay With God. But before I do that, I just want to read these comforting words. Although it's difficulty today to see beyond the sorrow, may the blessings of love be upon this family, and may peace abide with them. May its essence illuminate your hearts now and forevermore. Amen. I know the mountains get so high sometimes. I know the valley seems so wide. It seems the journey, it will never end. And you keep asking the question, God, why? I know the road gets rocky sometimes. I know the heartaches are severe. It seems like life will never change its tide. But there's an answer to all of life cares. Stay with God in spite of what you see or feel. Stay with God in spite of how things may appear. Stay with God. It doesn't matter what may come our way. There is only one place we can say. Stay with God. 
I know the work feels safe. Give up now. I know you feel you can't hold on. You're not the only one who is carrying your load. Remember he said, you cast your cares on him. I know you cry and tell everyone you meet because you feel that war is a pain. But if you just believe your life is in God's hands, and today I tell you your mountains will disappear, on and in spite of what you see or feel, stay with God in spite of how things may appear. Stay with God, it doesn't matter what may come my way. There is only one place we are safe. Stay with God, stay with God. In spite of what you see or feel, stay with God. In spite of how this may appear, Stay with God, it doesn't matter what may come our way. There's only one. Stay with God. You got life in him, and there is hope in him. There's a bright future. Just stay with him, yeah, just stay with him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he'll never leave you, he'll never, never forsake you, no. Just cast all your cares upon him. Don't give up now, don't give in, no. Stay with God, stay with God, stay with Jesus, yes. Oh, he's a wonderful God, oh, yes, he is. Stay with God. God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed the death and brought life and immortality to life, grant that your servant, Randall Dudley, being raised with him, may know the strength that reigns one Bible reading by Greg. Good afternoon, everybody. The Bible reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 to 7. 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the end. thirst of fountain of life by the thirst of the fountain of life Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, 
that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way we know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here endeth the reading. We stand to sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. I wish you, my brothers and sisters, to join with me in considering two portions of Scripture, both from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. St. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 2, which reads, Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, and uh, chapter 7, verse 29. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In between these two verses of sacred scripture, we find what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is really much 
more than what we may consider a sermon to be. It is really a unique body of teaching given by our Lord to his disciples. And I say a unique body of teaching. For indeed, my brothers and sisters, this commonly called Sermon on the Mount really brought out an understanding of Jesus as teacher, that he was teacher. One way that the evangelists and apostle Matthew helped us to understand Jesus as teacher is found in the first verse of the fifth chapter. We are told that when our Lord Jesus saw the crowd, he went up the mountain. And we are told he sat down and his disciples came to him. That unlocks for us Matthew's desire to help us to see that he is focusing on Jesus as teacher. For in the ancient times, rabbis took their seats as they thought. So the sitting bit, that bit of information is to help us to understand with Matthew, the evangelist and the apostle, that he is speaking or really introducing us to Jesus, the teacher. And this body of teaching is so profound that many a writing took place as a result of it and around it. For many, this narrative, and will, they were able to draw from it some tools for living. Some drew values which would help them to live in this world. Some saw it as a text, almost like a textbook on ethics. The only trouble with that, my friends, is that when they truly read it in its finest detail, there were some who concluded that here was a body of teaching that constituted the impossible ideal. In other words, it was so rich and demanding that there would have been the view of some that humanity can't really reach there. And so it was called the narrative of the impossible ideal. It is ideal, but we can't get there. Some recognize and know that in this body of literature may be found some tools, as I have said, but tools now for the creation of the good society. The Sermon on the Mount, as it is called, also provided the moral compass for many. And so, my friends, it is fair to say that this body of teaching touched many minds in this life. Many of us would remember that we had to learn St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. And I'm sure that some of you will want to get up almost on a point of order and say, you mean the Beatitudes. We had to learn it. Whether it would have been in Sunday school or in the public school where our brother Randy Randall would have worked. It was part of their upbringing. Many adults cited portions of 
called it as saints. How many used it as a tool of wisdom? Who can forget that interesting section about the building of the house on the sand and on the rock? I would not ask you to sing it. But certainly I wouldn't either. But how many of us remember this in verse about the wise man building his house upon the rock and the foolish man building his house upon the sand? And of course, in the primary school where our brother, Mr. Ford, would have been, the teachers took pride in making us act out as we sang and some of us as we attempted to sing. <laughs> so it even brought verse and song. My brothers and sisters, who will forget every turn and every twist, we were stared in the face with the words enshrined in what we call the golden rule. Every time. And then, for those who sought a deeper relationship, we were able to draw from it the importance of prayer. We were able to understand the value of prayer. And indeed, as we would in this service, we encountered the model prayer with our Father. Some of us call it the Lord's Prayer. And so, my friends, this Sermon on the Mount, it's in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. Those chapters, chapter 5 through 7, became, as it were, a body of teaching for us. But the body of teaching pointed us to our Lord Jesus as the great teacher. We still can call on it today. And I believe that as we come to celebrate the life and contribution of Randall Dudley Ford, we can still call on it. Because in a real way, we are still called upon to be careful how we judge. That is found in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. We are called upon to love our enemies. You see why people call it the impossible idea? We are called upon not to allow anger to be part of our makeup. In the Sermon on the Mount, there is a teaching on anger. Perhaps we need to follow that and have it. You know how you have these sign words? Put them up. In the pages, chapters 5 through 7, we can find, my friends, a teaching on retaliation, what not to do. Perhaps that too may be needed in strategic places in Barbados. And we can go on and on picking out here and there aspects of the Sermon on the Mount. But I'm not here 
merely to do that. I have used these bits and pieces to point to the value of teaching and hence the importance of the teacher, which leads us right in to the reason why we should praise Almighty God, why we should give thanks with all our heart for the life and the work and the contribution of our brother. We have heard in between the eulogy and the tribute. Oh, that was needed to be recorded for this purpose. The lives he touched even after retirement. Like the master, he knew that he had the crowds coming to him, but the crowds of innocent little ones and the not so little. And he understood that he was to train them up that they may seek those things which are much better, that they may learn, that they may be in the know, it is very interesting that the word for disciple is the same basic word for pupil. Same word. Word for disciple. And disciple really means a pupil. And so it is therefore not pulling a passage of scripture out of a hat. I chose the Beatitudes in which St. Matthew up front gave us an understanding of our Lord Jesus as the great teacher. Where in verse 29 of chapter 7, they said the people were astonished, the disciples were astonished, for he taught them as one. Here was a brother teaching as one with authority that big men and women can talk about him and some present today too. And some follow him. The importance to the extent that he went and furthered his studies, he furthered his studies, that he could be better at this time. In other words, I get the sense, therefore, that he went the extra mile so that he can teach as one with authority. But what has stood out for me in my encounter with him as rector of the Church of St. Mary was a man who understood the place of God in the life of those children committed to his charge. And those of you who know that area well, would we'll know that it is really a stretch as a risk to walk those children from St. Mary's Primary School to St. Mary's Church. When the water is not a threat, you know what it is. But Randall accompanied those children and ushered them to their seats in St. Mary's Church. Randall recognized what the ancient philosophers harked upon and they out 
and permit me to quote them as nearest as possible. For the ancient philosophers, an educated man, quote unquote, or the educated person, for them they review the male gender. The educated person was the person who was able to have much more than certificates. And so to be an educated man in the eyes of the ancient philosophers, you also had to be a man of morals and a man of ethics. And isn't this what our Prime Minister, the Honorable Mayor Amar Motley, had been calling for a few weeks ago? When she was making the point that we need to approach our education from a holistic point of view so that our students do not grow without a moral compass, it came over as a news item. But here was this happening all the time. So we need to find out what has happened that this call had to be made. But it is in the light of Randall Dudley Ford, Mr. Ford, who ensured that those under his charge had access to the knowledge that will help them to be boys and girls, and then later men and women, with a moral compass. He understood what was going on. And so he would have known that for us, who would have administered teaching to these children, that we knew why they were coming into our church as Anglicans. And we knew that our task was not to be engaged in a plucking exercise to have them inside with us, but to make them into moral men and women. Not about proselytizing, but about teaching. Why? Because we understood the work of Richard Rawl, who opened the first teacher training institute at Codrington College, the place that trained the priests. So that theology and education and teacher training all went together. Why? Because the ancient philosophical understanding is that the educated person must also be a person of ethics and value and morals. If and when the history of that beloved school is written, and certainly in the annals of the Church of St. Mary, I believe and will argue that the work of our brother Randall Dudley Ford in seeking to build the good society through education and having a sense of ethics and morality, that these must all form part of the writings. Yes, see him there with his long sleeve shirt folded back at the sleeve. And in fact, every time I think about him, that's all it is. A long sleeve shirt folded at the cup. More heard than, more seen than heard. So I was a bit taken aback when I heard that he administered floggings. Because <laughs> so he never looks old. But then you say, looks can be deceiving, right? And so, my brothers and sisters, if we want to not only give thanks to the, for the life of our brother Randall, but to take away something from this chapel this afternoon, I want to invite you to spend some time reading again. The Sermon on the Mount. Not to missions, but to see.
see how what's in there can help us to be a better individual each. So we thank God for his contribution. Randy, you know why you became a servant now? <laughs> and what you do in the sanctuary was always seen and not heard. You know why now? Because it was an ingrained And so, my brothers and sisters, let us thank God for the life of our brother. Let us praise God that he has given us someone like Randall. And let us pray God that as he has fallen asleep in him, that he would wake up in his life. And that rest eternal may be granted to him. That light perpetual may shine upon him that he may rest in peace and rise to life in glory. To all the members of the family, you can go home saying, well done, as you leave. Randall, in the hands of our life. And may this God carry you through in the days. May we stand. Five of the, the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God. Christ are the King of glory, eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not abhor the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Help your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us kneel to pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray together the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God, our Father, the creator and preserver of all life. Blessed be Jesus Christ, the savior and redeemer of mankind. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the enabler and sustainer of those who seek for grace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done, and the good we have failed to do and strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, the maker and redeemer of all mankind, grant us with your servant, Randall Dudley, and all the faithful departed, 
the sure benefits of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father in heaven, you gave your son Jesus Christ to suffering and to death on the cross and raised him to life in glory. Grant us a patient faith in time of darkness and strengthen our hearts with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand. Let us commend our brother Dudley to the mercy of God our Maker and Redeemer. By your mighty power in Christ, to your mercy in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. and rose again and reigns with you in ever oh Lord may he and all the to the mercy of the Lord
thinking about the others, that's why I'm here. Apart from the fact that it would have been my duty to be here having served the king when I was at King Henry. And certainly for Randy to speak to him. And each and every one of us had a centennial cup. The Lord be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.
Pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Randall Dudley, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Randall Dudley and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory, Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection, receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved 
the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, Amen. and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. Our first hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, and please, we rely here now on the system.
further along. Thank you.
blessed assurance. To God be the glory.
Sorry, dear. No problem. Just tell me the rest. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm not sure how he would give you a call.